love is my essence. Wisdom is my guide. These are two of the 12 powers Charles Fillmore wrote about. Charles Fillmore talked about these in several of his books. And Paul Hazelbeck, who wrote Heart-Centered Metaphysics, writes about them being 12 inherent spiritual qualities or abilities that we all have within us. I refer to Paul Hazelbeck because he has interpreted Charles Fillmore for this day and time. These 12 strengths vary from people to people, person to person. <laughs> Each power is an ability to do something. For instance, the quality of order is not as strong in me as in many of you. <laughs> but I keep on working to strengthen it. <laughs> the Apostle John exemplifies love. John had a very special love for Jesus and a very special relationship. So he is the disciple mentioned when we think of the power of love. Divine love loves everyone and everything. There is no bias in divine love. It is love, pure and simple. Divine love has nine attributes. They are patience, kindness, generosity, humility, courtesy, unselfishness, good temper, guilelessness, and sincerity. <laughs> this is mentioned in Christian Healing by Charles Fillmore on pages 133 and 134. James, the son of Zebedee, represents good judgment in dealing with important issues. Spiritual discernment is that inner voice that sometimes interrupts other ponderings. This inner voice is intuition. And I always listen to it no matter how crazy it seems. It has always shown me the way I need to go. People who don't believe in intuition have either not developed that quality, like me with order, or, <laughs> or they have ignored these feelings, calling them crazy. And sometimes they seem like that. I developed postpartum depression after my second daughter was born. I tried to ignore it, but depressive feelings became very strong in me and continued several years. One day, my daughters were outside playing in the wonderful big sandbox their father had built for them. I was watching them and was really enjoying their playing, while also, <clears throat> while also thinking seriously about committing suicide. Suddenly, the real world was stripped away as I realized my mother-in-law would be caring for them if I were not alive. Oh. <laughs> Alice was not a good mother, in my opinion, and I was so horrified at that knowledge that suddenly, right next to me, there appeared a huge object. It seemed to be cone-shaped, although it changed as I looked at it, it reached from the floor to the ceiling, and it was beautiful, being entirely composed of very glittering pieces of different colors. And as if from a distance, I heard a deep voice say, my child, my child. I was shocked back into my skin. I knew I had had a divine experience, and I knew at that very moment that committing suicide was not for me. 
I also realized I had not gone to spirit for help. Why had I not even thought of that, I wondered. I went to the doctor. He told me I just had some anxiety. I'd get over it. Those were the days doctors were not aware of postpartum depression, so it made perfect sense to go to spirit, which I then did. I focused on health and wholeness in meditation, and I became inspired to write an affirm affirmative statement for myself with spirit's guidance. I wrote about the spiritual qualities I needed to have to grow into a contented, peaceful person. And I read that affirmative statement over several times a day, and always whenever depressive feelings entered my mind. Gradually, I became that peace-filled person. And I truly believe divine wisdom guided my way with my mental health challenge. I have said several times in talks that I was very loved by my mother and grandparents. Because sincere, heartfelt love was given to me, I found it easy to give it back to the animals on our little acreage. I absolutely loved the rabbits, and I did not mind feeding them, cleaning their cages at all. I was not supposed to take them out of the cage, but I did it with the little baby several times. They were so soft and sweet, and they nestled right into my arms. I also loved baby chicks and ducklings. Chicks which weren't thriving were put into a shallow enclosure in our front yard in the summer where we would hand feed them. They often got better thanks to grandma's loving care. She would let us pick up certain ones to see them closer and to get them accustomed to people. Newly hatched ducklings were put into a shallow enclosure with a large water-filled pan. Ducklings were too fragile to be handled carelessly, but I was very careful with the baby chicks, so Grandma coached me on how to hold a duckling, watched me closely, and allowed me to do that. Oh, I love those ducklings. And it, it you know, they, it's, they talk to me. And they seemed happy sitting in my hands. It seemed they loved me as much as I loved them. Could that be? I wondered. Grandma also fed the wild birds. Many different birds came to the feeders, and we loved them all. I especially loved the cardinals and chickadees. Grandma really loved the house sparrows, too, which she referred to as my little brown birds. Grandma loved the wild birds and happily fed them, whereas it was a chore for me, but I did it. I loved playing with the kittens in the barn. We were so grateful for our barn cats because we never had to worry about mice. I was grateful because there were always kittens to play with. There is something so wonderful about holding and cuddling a little kitten and feeling their warmth and closeness. I truly loved that. I was very different from my three siblings. I was shy. They mostly loved to run and play together. I enjoyed some of that, but I also very much enjoyed my time with my family, my elders. I learned so much from them. I remember one day when I was very young and the roses were in bloom, 
Mother took me by the hand and led me around the large flower garden to see all the roses. In those days, there were many different climbing roses. And they climbed on the fence that was the boundary for the flower garden. I recall that day very fondly because we stopped to look at the different roses and the buds on each plant. We also had two big shrub roses, one in yellow and one in pink. And I marveled at the difference because they looked nothing alike, other, you know, other than the color, of course. <laughs> Mother spent lots of time showing me different colors of other flowers, too. With some flowers, there appeared to be smaller blooms within the larger bloom. I would never stop to notice that. Snapdragons fascinated me, and so did hollyhocks. And the hollyhock ladies we made out of a bloom and a bud. Just put them together. Becky knows. <laughs> I learned so much from the natural world from Mother, and I know, I know that is why I love nature so much. Mother let me help her with weeding and removing dead blooms from the flowers and also watering plants that needed it. I also helped plant annuals in the spring. Now, I would like to talk a bit about wisdom. I was gaining earthly wisdom. The spirit of wisdom, however, comes from the superconscious mind, and it often is a mystery. When we are aware of it, it's a wonderful experience but it doesn't often communicate with words. Very often, it simply blesses us with pure knowing, without us being aware of how that occurs. That wordless knowing is very powerful. Sometimes there is a voice, maybe sounding like mine, maybe different. Both come from divine mind. It is only in the last 40 years that I have become aware of this deeper knowing, and it began to happen when I began to meditate and to feel the results of time in the silence. Back now to my childhood. <laughs> in those days, there were things I knew consciously, like which adults liked me. I knew certain teachers liked me, and I knew certain teachers didn't like any kids. I knew my mother and grandparents loved me. I gave love back to the people that I sensed loved me. As Nelson Mandela said, be loving and you will never want for love. I loved being with Grandma when she was getting things ready for dinner and when dinner was getting done. We often sat and shelled peas and beans and cut green beans together. Grandma would hum happily while she worked. When it came to cooking the meal or making something like angel food cake, I would watch carefully to see what she was doing. I always got to help do the things I could do, like whipping the batter for angel food. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she always let me take a taste, and the food she cooked was always so delicious that it was hard to wait until it was done. My sister Patricia and I had long hair. Mine was blonde and hers was black. In the morning before school, Grandma would always braid our hair and put ribbons in it to match our dresses. This was such a gift of love to us. Grandma loved giving the gift and we loved receiving it. 
We each would sit on a stool and try not to wiggle. That's hard. The braids always looked perfect, and they stayed pretty all day. Grandma and I always had a special time together after supper was over. She would make a pot of green tea, and we would each have a cup with a teaspoon of sugar. It was a nice time to talk over different things, ask Grandma questions, and just enjoy being together. And it made such a nice ending to the meal. There were so many things I loved to do with Grandpa. When I was little, he took me in the combination stroller and carrier for milk and cream, which we delivered around town. Later on, I loved to walk barefoot with him while he used the hand plow pulled by our two workhorses to plow the fields for planting. I loved walking in that rich black soil, and I loved walking close to Grandpa. The crows would fly around looking for juicy worms, and I would feel grateful for the rich, lush soil that had once been part of the Missouri River. I also loved taking Grandpa his lunch and a fresh thermos of coffee out to the fields that were farther away. There would be an extra cookie for me, and we would often just sit and talk. I loved to walk with him and Poochie, our border collie, out to the far pasture to walk the milking cows to the cow barn in the late afternoon. Of course, the calves and heifers and the bull would walk in, too. Poochie would gather up any stragglers while Grandpa and I just enjoyed the walk and being together. The milking cows knew which, which stall was theirs, and they always went to the right stall, and that just amazed me. Once in a while, there was confusion with a heifer we had just begun to milk, but Grandpa would get that sorted out right away. Poochie was a wonderful dog. I really loved him, and I could tell he loved me. I worried about him in the winter, but Grandpa always put him in the warm horse barn for the night because Grandma didn't want dogs in the house. In the wintertime, I would think about him, but I knew the horse barn was warm, and Grandpa would spread fresh hay for him to sleep on, and put, excuse me, hay bales on three sides of him and give him food and water. In the morning early, Grandpa would let Poochie out. Before dinner, I loved going into the living room to ask Grandpa if I could sit on his lap. Grandpa wasn't a tall man, so in a few years, I was too big to do that. But when I was little, he would be reading the newspaper, and I would just slip inside and cuddle up. It was wonderful. All the chores were done before supper. After we kids took turns washing and drying the dishes, we would get washed up, put on our clean pajamas, and meet in the living room for story time. It was always lots of fun. I think I've said this before. We heard our favorites, and then Mother would read something we, didn't, we hadn't heard before to challenge us a bit. She always explained things we didn't understand. When we realized a new fairy tale was getting scary, she would assure us it was going to turn out fine. We always had one of Grandma's cookies and a glass of milk for our bedtime snack, and then we went upstairs to bed. Each of us would get a hug and kiss before Mother turned off the light. What wonderful times we had. Mother listened to Charles Fillmore on the radio. He broadcast on the Council Bluffs radio station. She made it a weekly practice to listen to him, so from the beginning of my life, she was always open to the unity way of life, and she held some unity beliefs. My favorite magazine, as I have said before, 
was We Wisdom, the magazine Myrtle Fillmore and her sons wrote. My grandma and grandpa had a wonderful marriage. With the exception of the one time grandpa played pool with his buddies and in the process drank too many beers, <laughs> they were always loving and kind to each other. Grandma definitely did not respond well to anyone who drank too much, but by bedtime, Grandpa was in the house, and next morning we kids could tell all was forgiven. Grandpa was honest and kind. He was quiet and didn't talk much, but he sang wonderful folk songs. When he did talk, I always listened because it was something I needed to hear or wanted to hear. I could always tell how much he loved us children, even if we arrived at a time when he was hoping to cut back a little and not work so hard. I have often marveled that he and Grandma helped take such good care of us and accepted us so lovingly, even though my father contributed nothing to support us. If they were bitter about it, they certainly didn't show it. Love includes patience, kindness, <clears throat> generosity, and sincerity. And the three adults had all those good qualities and more besides. In the body, the origin for love and where we feel it is in our heart center. We think with our minds and we feel with our hearts. Judgment and discernment are part of the wisdom aspect I have referred to. Judgment can be exercised in two ways. There is the sense judgment, which is purely part of our human nature. These judgments are not always accurate. There is also spiritual discernment, which is infallible. The season of Lent began last Wednesday, February 22nd. In unity, this is a time to let go of beliefs and biases that no longer serve us and to explore and affirm our oneness with God. We release the past and we affirm our spiritual gifts of love, compassion, wisdom, understanding, and discernment. Friends, let us continue to grow together in love and in wisdom. As we affirm that we will walk together with our new minister along the same spiritual path, united we will have a similar focus and an open relationship. We will enjoy each other and have fun together we will have an honest, authentic relationship with our new minister. We will not see this person as different from us, but walking the same path we are walking. Love and wisdom will serve us well as we walk together. And as we all honor the divine presence in each of us, our Christ essence. Our future here at Unity of Springfield is bright and glorious. We look forward to it with great enthusiasm. We are very grateful for all our many blessings. Thank you, loving spirit. Dave?
Let us take one or two deep breaths and relax completely. Sitting back in our chairs, we release any leftover concerns we may have. We are loving expressions of divine spirit. We are lovingly supported by the one presence and power that breathes life into our beings. We live our lives joyously and gratefully, affirming divine order and perfect peace. Love is the only power in the universe. As unconditional love surrounds, comforts, and sustains us, we know we are loved by spirit now and always. Our very nature is love. I love myself just as I am, for there is no one in the world like me or like you. Today, I remember the words of Jesus when he said, you are the light of the world. So I let my light shine. I express my highest and best self, and love and light return to me every time. I look within for divine wisdom. I affirm spiritual guidance and find guidance to make small and large decisions. Spirit within me guides me to the understanding and courage that I need. Each time I affirm guidance and receive guidance, I become stronger spiritually. A deep connection with my inner being shines as a beacon of light, an inner guiding, an inner guiding light within my heart and mind that shines the wisdom of truth in all situations. Knowing that, I feel a sense of calm wash over me. I move forward gratefully and confidently, knowing I never have to face challenges alone. I am at peace, knowing the path ahead of me is clear. I can count on the light of truth within to guide me to my greatest good. Now let us spend some time in the silence. The silence.
as we return to this place and this time. We give thanks that love and wisdom really do guide us. When we affirm that is true, we are grateful for all the love and guidance we receive from you, Divine Spirit. Now we open our eyes when we are ready as Dave plays some music to close this time of meditation. Thank you, Dave. Now let us sing with Alyssa and Gay, Let God Be Seen in Me, page 23 in the blue.